Hey everyone, it's Jody Seely with Our High River as we continue our conversations with those vying for counselor positions with the town of High River. Next up, we have Deborah Goje. And Deborah, thank you so much for taking a few minutes, what I know is like the crunch few days to, to have a conversation with us. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, so we're going to start off with what I hope is the easy question in that uh, we just want to learn a little bit more about you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and then why you decided to throw your hat in to be a hopeful counselor in our community. Well, I'd be happy to talk about myself, Jody. Um, you know what? I moved to High River in 2009. I actually came with the radio stations as the general manager. Um, but it wasn't my first introduction to this beautiful community. Um, I grew up in England. And uh, when I was a young teen, we moved to Alberta to Turner Valley. And I used to come to High River to home ec classes here. And I used to think, man, this is a very, very pretty leafy town. It kind of reminded me of old Europe in a way. And so so that's, that's how my whole introduction to this area started. Uh, I remember my mom and I used to come shopping here and it was always a, a, a trip because at that time, Okotoks wasn't really the preeminent town. Like High River was the it town and it was sort of the agricultural hub and the cowboy hub and it was somehow cool and cachet and old world Albertan and it just had this charm about it that obviously has stuck with me for years and years. So I left, did university in Ontario, um, spent many years learning business, working my way up ladders, and ultimately uh, came back to the West. Um, it's where my heart is, and I decided to make High River my home. I bought a heritage home here in the old Southwest, which I lovingly restored. It was actually in the heritage home tour in 2012. And of course, then I had to re-restore it after the flood. Um, but you know, it, through that experience, um, I mean, it, it just makes a community, it takes community to a whole other level and made an indelible impression on my whole life and uh, lasting friendships that will, I'm sure, endure for the rest of my life. So um, it's not surprising that I am running for council because I have a vast experience living in communities in six different provinces across the country and as well growing up in England. And I've seen a lot of communities in similar size, what they've done, how they have flourished, and some of the challenges that they've had to overcome, not unlike us, obviously, with our, our flood stigma. And so I see such potential here and my in my heart, I want to see this community flourish. And I want it to become this jewel that people near and far will know about. Because right now, for those of us who live here, we know all the great attributes of the town, but it's kind of like a really well-kept secret still. And if people don't know about us, if we don't, you know, create something that is special for them um, and fulfill a vision for them, then it's going to be hard to grow. And the reality is growth is important because that's what's going to sustain us. So I decided to, to run for council because I think my vision is strong. I think I represent uh, a very significant demographic in the community. And I think it's really important to have balance on it. any any town council or any in any association with people who bring different things to the table, um, but are bonded by the passion to see something flourish. And so I feel at home here, actually my parents, I moved my parents back from the Okanagan to High River. We built a, prop, a home for them on our property. They live there just across the yard from me now. Um, I am a, an independent business owner. I own a manufacturing company of nutraceuticals. Um, my husband um, owns a company, he manufactures boats. Uh, and you know, we're based in High River. And so we are heavily, heavily invested in this community. We're part of the fabric of the business community. And I think it just made sense for me to take things to the next level. And if the electorate thinks that you know, uh, what I'm running for and the platforms that I'm running on make sense to them, then, you know, it would be my privilege to represent them. That's awesome. Well, we're going to try to streamline some of that platform a little bit in just in the sake of time for people. Could you share with us, Deborah, what you feel are your kind of top three priorities going into this? And if elected, how you'd kind of start to roll that out? 
Sure. Well, and and I should mention that um, I have a bio and my platforms listed on my website, um, debforcouncil.ca. Um, but for me, the first, you have to start logically and it, it's sort of a se sequential process. And right now I feel that High River is lacking a brand. It is not really identified with anything. It's, it's sort of just there. There are little bits and pieces. We have all kinds of different legacies and cultural heritages, but we don't have a strong brand that's going to attract business people to come here and develop business, new industries to set up, and new residents to come. We also have a burgeoning potential for a tourist industry, which we're not tapping into. But again, the brand is a starting point so that when people think High Rev River, they see a vision that we are going to paint for them. So branding is, is key for me. Following that, obviously, is development and growth, business development and growth. I mean, there are industries that aren't even represented here. And we have core infrastructures here that we can build on. You know, we have a hospital. We have a hospital. We have a demographic. Um, our primary demographic is seniors. They need the facilities. Our next demographic is baby boomers. They're going to be needing the facilities. Why don't we expand them? Health is in the fore of every newscast today. We can make this a real hub using some of the infrastructure that's already in place but needs some TLC and, and, and updates. So business development, how about post-secondary business development? You know, if I look at the city of Camrose, um, it now has a satellite campus for the University of, of Alberta because Camrose is a long commute to, Al to, to Edmonton. Well, we're a long queue. I did my first year when I was in Turner Valley. I commuted to, to Calgary. It's a long drive. Had I had the opportunity to start post-secondary education here, I would have much preferred to drive to High River. So, I mean, I think there are areas in, that we haven't even delved into yet, quite frankly. And let's not forget, we have a little airport as well. We have a strip and that allows greater accessibility. We're right on Highway 2. I mean, it's really a prime opportunity for all kinds of development. And I think so the third one is going to be exposure um, and, and doing the things that we need to do to make sure that we are well protected, that ties into you know, our water system, that ties into make, making sure that we have services that benefit every demographic in our community. You know, uh, when we're developing, we need to look at subsidized housing. We need to look at maybe rental housing. We need to look at new home developments. We need to look at new business developments that will allow us to bring people because there are viable employment opportunities. So the growth platform really kind of is part of my overall um, focus because it has so many different components to it. And I think we're ripe for it. And we look at towns around us, Jody, they're doing a really good job. And if we don't get in this game, then we're going to lose opportunity to towns that are a little bit more progressive and aggressive than we are right now. And that's my concern for High River. I don't want us to get left behind when we have so much to offer. Yeah, I love that. So one of the things that people were bringing up to us in feedback in wanting to get to know the candidates a little bit better was where people sort of feel about transparency and respect and different elements. And a few people brought up that they'd looked into the AUMA's, um, it's called a local democracy pledge. And so curious if you've had a chance to check that out, what your thoughts on it would be, and a pledge like that or that one in particular, would you be willing to to sign to be that kind of transparent person? Well, you know, sure. Uh, I, I have I have looked at it. I've read it through, and um, I think it makes perfect sense. I, I, to be perfectly honest, to me, it's common sense. Anybody running for any kind of office uh, should have no problem with that because without transparency we we don't have honesty and what then what are we here for you know so i i think it's good it, it's it's an accountability um mechanism um and if if it if it's something that conveys to people the sincerity of the candidates then i'm all for it you know and i would hope that that transparency and sincerity and upholding of democracy you know then continues um into the council because it, if we're going to go through this um, 
exercise, if you will, during the process to identify what we stand for and, and make ourselves transparent to people, then we have to be able to do that if and when elected as well, right? Because that's the continuum of that same sort of ideology. So yeah, I would have no problem um, signing that at all. Yeah. Or when you start Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you kind of alluded to this last question in sort of your overall piece of, of priorities, but we're asking each person kind of to share their thoughts on uh, a current strategic point that the current council had put together. And their number one strategic priority is the future of High River's water and what the long-term water strategy would be like. So what are your thoughts on, on that piece? Well, um, you know, <laughs> it's obviously paramount because we live in High River and we don't have the best history with water. Um, but, but I want to state that this is not just a High River issue. This is actually front and center across Alberta because we have three main areas of concern for, for our water. One is to provide uh, pure, healthy water for drinking. Uh, the other is to maintain healthy water for our ecosystems, which I think um, the current town council has done a very good job of when it comes to the coal mining uh, to, to prevent contamination of environment and wildlife. And then the third one is to make sure we have enough sustainable resources um, for our economic base. You know, we have watersheds in place, we have mitigation that's been done, but if we're going to boom and grow, we need to make sure that we have adequate water to maintain a certain lifestyle standard of living. And I think part of this actually comes down to education because we have areas, we have lagoons where water is being flushed right now. And, you know, people are still putting the wrong things you know, flushing the wrong things down the toilet. And it's not helping the environment. It's not helping with wastewater treatment. And these are things that as individuals, we all have to take responsibility for. So knowing that it is a strategic priority for council makes me very happy because we live in a, in a global climate change reality and we cannot predict the weather. It changes from... Well, in Alberta, it changes from minute to minute. But, you know, season to season, we don't know uh, how much water we're going to have. We don't know where the runoff streams are going. And so this, I think, honestly, Jody, is going to be on the agenda basically as an ongoing platform because without water, there's not really much talk point in talking about any kind of development or future for any community. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. We know we hit some more advanced poll opportunities this weekend. Election day is coming up on Monday. And Deborah, if someone wanted to reach out and connect, ask some more questions, learn more about what you bring to the table, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you over the next few days? Well, and my website is uh, is listed on um, the town council site. So it's www.debforcouncil.ca. That gives you some answers. But if you want to reach out to me personally, and many, many people have, and I love it because I'm getting so many good questions, which shows me how passionate everybody is about this election and our future. Um, Deborah.goje at gmail.com. And I promise I will get back to you. All right. Awesome, Deborah. Thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us and best of luck to you in this election. Thank you, Jody, And to everybody, just make sure you get out and vote. That's the critical factor. Get out and vote. Exercise your right.